Hello, everyone. I wanted to do a brief video reviewing the Epicurus review questions, the first reading we did. Uh, I will do this rather than um, respond to each one of your uh, answers individually. Um, we have to be realistic about this. There's just too many people in the class to really do that. Um, I think it's much more efficient just to uh, talk over the questions, give you a sense of what kind of answers I was looking for. And then if your answers really stray from that, then you should get in touch with me. Feel free to email me, call me. Don't contact me through the Canvas site. I never get those messages. Just email me directly at my LaSalle email or call me on my cell phone. So I will give you the, what I was thinking about, which is not to say that what I say is the only good answer, but I'll give you a sense of what kind of answers I was looking for, what I had in mind, and this should help with the essays and with the final exam. Sorry for the street noise. Um, does Epicurus ever say what death is? Yes, he does. Um, right here. Of course, as we look through the letter, we see that we, we know that the crucial part is this third paragraph on the first page. Uh, continuing into the second page, but he, he says uh, right here. Death is the privation of all awareness. There you go. He does. That's a definition of death. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's, it's just really good to note that, uh, that, that what Epicurus says here is very dense about death. Um, it, 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 it's very rich in, 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 in its uh, statements about what death is. Um, so it, it bears a lot of thinking, like what exactly is the argument? And all arguments have starting points. All arguments have beginnings. All arguments begin with assumptions. And this is, I believe, Epicurus's basic assumption about death, that death is the privation, the taking away uh, of all awareness, of all consciousness, of all feeling, of all thought. So death is the privation of all awareness. That's, that's the starting point, and that is what he believes death is. And then everything sort of follows from that. So the answer to that question is, yes, death, he, he uh, sorry, um, he does say what death is. He says it right there, death is the privation, the taking away of all awareness. Number two, why does Epicurus think that death is nothing to us? Because, of course, that is the, um, the big conclusion. Uh, death is nothing to us. Well, it follows from death being the privation of all awareness. And, and here we say, um, uh, good and evil imply awareness. Right? That is, for something to be good for me or to be bad for me, it implies that I am aware of it. But death is the privation of all awareness. Um, so I'm not aware of death. Since when death comes, uh, I am unconscious. I am non-conscious. I don't exist. So, so um, it can be neither good nor bad for me because for something to be good or bad for me, I, I, I must be aware of it. And when death comes, I am not aware of it. Uh, so it can't be bad for me. It can't be good for me either, but it can't be bad for me. So he does provide a kind of a tight little argument that death is nothing to us. Um, and it follows from his uh, initial assumption that death is the privation of all awareness. Epicurus says, quote, when we are, death has not come. And when death has come, we are not. What does this mean? Well, that's a kind of a vague question, but I really gave you that question because I just wanted you to focus on that little quote, uh, which starts here uh, at the bottom, page one. Death, therefore, the most awful of evils, is nothing to us, seeing that when we are, death has not come. And when death has come, we are not. It is nothing then, either to the living or to the dead, for with the living it is not, and the dead exists no longer. It's a pretty 
amazing statement there and that very memorable uh, when we are death has not come and when death has come we are not really it's a very pithy way of saying it that, that that death is not a part of life but as long as you're alive you have not experienced death and since you have to be alive to have any experience you can't experience death there's no overlap between us and death uh, that they are logically incompatible that if someone is dead, that means that they're not feeling anything, they're not experiencing anything. And if someone is feeling and experiencing something, it means they haven't died, that death has not come. So I just really wanted you to focus on that very <clears throat> definite way in which Epicurus makes this very fundamental, logical distinction. Like you, it, it, It's just so basic that, that if you're alive, you're not dead, and if you're dead, you're not alive. Um, and it's just such an important part of what he has to say. So that, that's just all I really had to say. Those are all the questions, right? Um, just wanted to review them.